Right then, uh, basically, uh, uh, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to try and stop saying this. I always say it at the beginning of my videos. Hmm. Um, today, guys, I'm going to do a short video on, and then it ends up not being a short video. I'm doing it again. I'm speaking random randomness. So then, today, sorry about that. Bit of a crazy one there. Um, today, I mentioned this the other day, auxiliary ballast, um, and some people I know are going to complain because I've got live wires on my bench, but in actual fact they're not live all the time, they're only live when I'm using um, the auxiliary ballast. Um, I've made my own sticker up for it, so you can see where the split is. And you can see with two input wires coming in, you've got a brown and a blue, and all these just link across, so I can theoretically add more in there. Now, there is my stack down there of ballasts. Um, and basically, I've been wanting to try and ballast these potential transformers um, to a reasonable amount of power so they don't get blown up. Um, as you're probably all aware, uh, it's quite difficult to get ballasts without having to have a huge great stack down there. Now, that whole stack there, which you probably can't see that well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about 3,000 watts of ballast there. Um, that will, at some point, all be going into, as you've all seen, my control unit down here. I mean, this was a temporary thing for the house. When I hopefully move at some point, these things are taking ages. Um, basically, it won't be in there. It will all be mounted in a steel container. All the switches will be mounted properly. I'll have that variac with that variac stacked on top with a parallel and choke. So instead of being, I mean, I pull 65, 75 amps through this thing. It's built for 30 amps. It's got six brushes. It doesn't even get warm. I'm only pulling 70 amps through it for a short amount of time. It handles it fine. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's very OG, uh, where, <laughs> get my fucking teeth in. It's very over engineered. And that's the thing that I love about Zenith. So I'm, you know, I'm not keen on these cheap ones. I've even got myself, which I class as my portable Zenith. I can't move it. But it's still classed as my portable Zenith. Now, basically, guys, I've got 1750 watts in my unit down there, and I can switch between it. You probably all remember it. Um, if I want 250 watts, I go on there. If I want 750 watts, 1250, and 1750. Now, I've got an auxiliary ballast switch here. Now, unfortunately, when I put this in, I put the contactor for this auxiliary ballast right at this end. Now, to get to it is a complete ball bag of a mission. So, is this is only temporary anyway. Um, so, I got my head into it and thought, right, I can tap off of this one. So, get rid of all of them, and I've got a 250 watt ballast. Okay. Now in the front of my unit um, I've linked in parallel to this 250 watt ballast I've linked a, um, a set of uh, switches um, so that I can basically have that on or I can switch another switch on uh, manually unfortunately not again with the switches how I'm intended I've got 10 more of these switches um, I've got plenty of contactors that are all going to do it eventually um, so as for now, um, I switch a switch just down here, and you'll see in a minute, it's a uh, 400 volt 10 amp. Now, um, I recently acquired this ballast here, and as you can see, it's 14 amps. And it's smaller than MOT, it doesn't get hot. I've got this ballast here, but it ballasts to about 60 amps, which is a bit much, to be honest. Um, but what you've also got to bear in mind, this is 
14 amps um, so that's uh, what is that 3500 watts something like that and one of the ballasts down there is only 600 watts so you know, this thing has got rather large windings on it I don't know if you can see that because it's got wires all over the bench but the wires going in there is the size of what is wrapped around this and then obviously it has an air core, an air gap in there an air core, what am I on about? it's got an air gap in there so what I do now is I link a wire up to there this is this grey cable unfortunately I've still got this laser test on the on the thing here, just come up for a little play just to see because I haven't actually tried it out since I got it and I've now got it run into this and I'll give you a short demonstration on how it works but the switch that is switching it is actually a MCB so as soon as I go over the current rate, current rating of the MCB it trips the uh, it trips the MCB so I I mean it was it's it was all a trial and error sort of thing really um, I can upgrade that switch within two minutes um, you know that that's just not an issue at all so the plan is I'll upgrade that switch I won't have a problem with it keep tripping out on me but it does give quite a good understanding into how that switch is working and it's quite handy to actually have an MCB in there so that if I do overload it will cut off so I've got everything set up um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you over to the potential transformer and I will turn this light off because that affects my arc or you guys being able to see it so then I'm on 250 watts down there we are now live, the switch is underneath my camera, the push switch, so I cannot be standing on it. Um, now something I always do is actually wrap my cable from the high voltage around my chair just so it doesn't touch the floor, it doesn't touch anything, I can't be stood near it, I can't be stood on it. Um, and I've got myself just enough room to go up there. So the Variax on 100 volts, as you know guys, these are 100 volt input. And what you will see is the ballast working to start off with is ballasted to 14 amps perfect absolutely perfect this transform will handle that maybe not all day um, I've been speaking to a, a people that have got a lot of potential transformers and they've you know it's a very con controversial thing at the moment on how much these things can take and what they can't take and basically you've just got to keep stepping it up trying it out and doing a two minute run on it say and if it gets warm uh, you have to leave it for half an hour because they're so poor at dissipating heat um, if, you haven't, if it hasn't got warm you know you can give it a bit more and you keep trying and trying and trying until you get to a, a point where it gets warm when it gets warm you know that you need to cut down a little so this is what happens and you'll see from how I've got a 250 watt ballast how when the MCB trips because it's pulling too much current it's a 5 amp MCB no 10 amp MCB is pulling 14 amps so it's it will run for a short bit and then and then trip out when that trips out it will then cut down to 250 watts so it's quite a good way to show you guys how it's all set up and working so uh, less of the rambling I mean I always ramble on but it's nice to explain things what's going on so people can actually understand so I will show you the art and I haven't switched the switch on so I shall reset the MCB right MCB reset so now the auxiliary ballast is working right so here you go and this is what we get three thousand watt ballast and so you saw how it was working uh, well, I say 3,000 watts, about 3,500, 4,000 watt in that tiny one little unit. And as soon as that MCB trips out, <laughs> 250 watt ballast. Um, so, yeah, hope that sort of makes sense to you guys. If there's any questions you want to ask, please don't hesitate to uh, drop, us a, drop us a comment. It's always nice to have comments, you know 
to be reassured that people are liking what you're doing. So thanks for watching and we shall uh, speak again soon.